Okay, so I don't know if uh, if you know, if you can tell by the weather, but it's like late May. We were promised summer. It was like 90 degrees, so, so what I'm gonna have to do is, one, I'm gonna start wearing a denim vest. Not, I just put my jean jacket in storage. It's stupid. So I got a message on my phone today about um, a delivery, and I don't know if, you, if I've told you guys earlier, I've been doing some uh, purchasing. I've been buying lenses, vintage lenses especially, and a lot of camera equipment that I don't really know how to use yet. So today, I finally got a message that a lens that I've been waiting for finally came in the mail, and I think this is gonna complete my collection. I'm really excited. This was coming from, from Russia. So it took a while to get here. It took a couple months. Today to day. So we're finally gonna do it now. So the thing about this lens is that I've been collecting a, a certain array of lenses and I think my collection is nearly complete. I, I don't want to have a full collection of all the same kind of lens. I'm willing to do some experimentation. There's, to my knowledge, two other lenses that I need to get and one of them I'm not real sure about right now. But this one, this one is special because out of all of the 50 mils, I've been waiting for that too. Awesome. Out of all the 50 mils that I got, this one I believe is going to be the most unique. I'm pretty sure it's a 50 mil. It could be a 35. We're going to find out in a minute. This lit. Holy moly. Uh, you know what? This ain't going to work. I'm definitely going to have to switch to a wider angle. This is, this is way too, way too tight. Just please back off. Back off. No pictures, please. You gotta, you gotta pardon my mess. I'm, uh, doing yard work and stuff, but we're gonna have ourselves bonfire tonight. Really cool things about living in the country. So, come on over here, we'll do this. The cool thing about this lens is that it has a reputation for what you call swirly bokeh, and I wanna see how well that's gonna be. I don't know if you, if you guys follow me on Instagram, uh, then you would have seen some of the pictures that I took with the swirly bokeh in the background. But I think this is gonna be like way higher than that. So let's go ahead and get this thing open, see what it looks like, and then we'll pop that on the camera. Gah! This is wrapped like one of Gracie's birthday presents. <laughs> cut the lens so man whoever wrapped this thing you did a great job jeez you could throw this down a flight of stairs and it wouldn't hurt the lens okay got it oh there it is there it is kind of okay so I don't know what to call this like I said 50 mil but I don't know if this is really gonna be counted as a 50 mil because it's, it's in Russian, and I think they use different measurements. So, well, it doesn't have a lens cap, so that might be an issue finding one, but I think I'll be able to find a cap for it. Um, yeah, I don't know if you can see that. I'll show that off a little bit later. But there's this is it. This is the Helios 442. This is a very infamous lens. It's got... Um, a really interesting effect and it comes on what you need it's called a, a, a 42 mount lens like a, there's a ring mount here that goes I got a couple of those so we're gonna try this for the first time like I said I've been waiting for this for months Super. so I got two uh, m42 mounts here this one is by Photosy I think they're both by Photosy Photosy I don't I don't know exactly know what it called can you see the le the letters here if you get a little bit closer, will that zoom in? Will that focus? Yeah. Yeah? Okay. So, yeah, that's where I got these mounts from. I, I, I like them. I trust them. I think they do a good job. This is for the EOS R. This is um, something I'm going to be taking photos on a little bit later today uh, when I go out. And I believe you can even screw mounts in there and, and make your mount a little bit more permanent. I'm, that's definitely way beyond what I'm doing today. But I'm gonna use this one. This is to a regular EF mount. 
Oh, that's the camera that we're using now. It's a, it's actually a Rebel T7i is the camera we're using now. So I've got one of these on my Indostar lens, which is also a, a, a Russian, like a security camera lens. And this is a little bit different. I, I wish I could tell you what the aperture opens up to on this. It looks like 0 0.5. I don't know if that's what that means. Um, we're gonna we're gonna find out. Like the the markings on this are so weird. Can you see the letters on this? Okay. So two comma five, one comma five. I doubt that. I seriously doubt this goes down to 0 0.5. Um, that would be insane, especially for this lens. But I mean, it opens up really like look look through the lens can you see through the lens can you see that opening and closing isn't that nuts like that opens up pretty much all the way so it might be as much as a uh, 0.5 I don't know fun so let me find the click yep and now it's threaded so I just screw that right in like that and it should be ready to go so I'm gonna put this on that camera and we're gonna see what it looks like all right here we go it's attached it's pretty blurry hoping that this works and there we go you are now looking at the smiling face of my beautiful daughter who's my model swinging in and out of focus so you might be saying to yourself you know I don't get it man it's it's you know, it's pretty clear, but I don't see what you mean as far as like what makes this lens special. And I think in order to show you, I'm going to have to bring you uh, to a different background. So let me have you stand up and come over here to these bushes. Let's do that. I'm closing the aperture. Okay, that's that's far enough. Come up, Come forward a little bit. Come forward a little more and move that way a little bit. Okay, you ready? I'm gonna open the aperture. Wow, that's really bright. Open the aperture, focus on you, and let's see if we can show off what makes this lens great. Can you see that in the background? Look at that bokeh. Now if you look around her, it's almost like, it looks like the leaves are swirling around us, around her. Why don't you walk, uh, walk a little bit that way. There you go, keep walking, keep walking. We're gonna take some photos and uh, I'll show you there as well. Help me videotape and you're modeling for me. I think this is a great lens so far. So we tried it with a model. Let's see how it works with just regular nature. We got some tall lush grass and some flowers here. Let's put the flowers in focus and everything else out of focus slightly. Don't fall in. Yeah, don't fall in the ditch, right? Mm -hmm. So those are in focus. It doesn't look like I can focus on the ones that are really close to me. Oh my gosh, I can. I can't believe the focal length is that close. I am like a foot and a half away from these flowers. How far can I? Let me focus. Let me just, let's see. Oh my goodness. Flowers are pretty. How far away would you say? It's like a foot and a half, almost two feet. That's way closer than a 50 mil. 
You see that? Mm-hmm. And that is an extremely shallow depth of field. I move it forward a little bit. I move it back a little bit. So it almost goes on to the next flower. You see that? It does. Mm -hmm. That's incredible. Flowers are pretty. And look how extremely... Okay, we're gonna close the aperture some. I got this on auto anyway, because I want to see how much we can capture when I close the aperture down. Daddy. That is a pretty flower. Look at that, now we got a group. Mm -hmm. That's good, that's really good. This, man, this might end up being my new favorite lens. Is that closed all the way? It was. It's running auto, so I don't know what that means, but don't know what the ISO or the frame rate is on but boy if I put this on a gimbal I mean you could film with this that aperture is all the way closed was it stopped down to I can't tell it stops down to 16 so that is pretty close now I'm gonna open this back up it'll get bright real quick and then you'll see that depth of field start to narrow look at that all the way up so maybe the depth of field really is 0.5, which is incredible. Now, close that again, and we've got all of that to look forward or to work with. I'll change the focal length so it's a little further out. And this is all on a Canon T7i. I mean, this tree is pretty close. This tree is about two feet in front of me. And that's that's in focus, well, kind of. Now, my whole goal is to use a, a gimbal with these vintage lenses. I may end up having to buy another Helios because this is just amazing. So I'm over there grunting at us. I don't know what, you know what that is? You see an animal over there grunting at us? You better go on for it. You can jump out and get your Thank you.